This episode of Getting to Know is Getting to Know the History of. And we are in, and I'll tell you who this guy is in a moment, but we are in the famed Dairy Master. So we're trying to find out the history of the Dairy Master. We understand it dates back to 1948, but we're trying to connect the dots. And one of those dots is sitting here with me right now. And we will join another dot, his father, in just a little bit, who bought the Dairy Master uh, way back in the late 1960s. This is Bernie Lannon. Bernie is a 1974 Ligoti High School graduate. So Bernie, welcome, first of all, and uh, appreciate you. <laughs> Bernie had no idea we were actually going to be recording on uh, through the camera. Thought we might be doing a little audio, so he brought his Purdue shirt. So sorry about that, but uh, you're not sorry, are you? No, absolutely not. <laughs> a lot of Purdue fans out there, including the owner of this establishment, is, <laughs> is a big Purdue fan and a Purdue grad. Well, Bernie, welcome back to the area. Uh, what brings you back to Lagodi? Well, family, and um, we're going to be visiting. <clears throat> Pauline Holtz, and uh, we visited yesterday with Phil and Michelle Erler and their grandkids. So, um, just getting back to, to home ground. Yeah. Your, your wife is Patty Erler. You said you were visiting the Erlers, and uh, uh, we all know back here that Patty's gone through a long, ongoing battle, still ongoing. How would you say she is today? She's doing very well. Uh, I think she's in her sixth year of remission. Fantastic. Wow. And she's here with you, obviously, visiting. And yourself, you went through a very, very difficult time a few years ago. I don't know if you're 100% recovered, Bernie, but you sure look good to me. Well, thanks for that, Greg. Um, yeah, it was a speed bump in my life. Yeah. Ruptured aneurysm. Uh, totally unexpected and six or seven months of recovery and but you're always recovering from an aneurysm mm -hmm. statistically the, the odds weren't on my side but uh, uh, I think I'm doing relatively well yeah so cliff notes before we start talking about memories of the dairy master just kind of cliff note version catch us up 1974 you graduate high school how do you end up where you are and where are you today? Currently, Patty and I are in Peachtree City, Georgia. Peachtree City, Georgia. All right. And Sounds nice. It is. It's a planned community that popped up in the 60s. But um, it's on the south side of Atlanta. It's where all the pilots and all the Delta workers mm -hmm. lived. And uh, we've been there since 1991. Wow, 30 years. And then uh, Robbins Air Force Base mm -hmm. before that in uh, 81 when I graduated from <clears throat> Purdue. Purdue, yeah. That's okay. So you did go to Purdue. Um, you went into the service, did you not? I did. Air Force? Air Force. Okay. Uh, how many years in the service? Well, total 30. And after retirement from the service, what'd you do? Well, I was eight years active and 22 years reserve. So, you know, you have your day job, as we yeah. call it. Yeah. And uh, I was down there at Robbins for 10 years, and then I went to Atlanta uh, for five years, worked in private industry in a financial company and then uh, they asked me if I wanted to come back to Robbins in a senior position so I said uh, well I've got to finish up this government retirement somewhere <laughs> and that's where you did it um, family tell me about your family I, I, I know you've got wife kids grandkids <laughs> right well Patty's probably more uh, famous than I am because she was a cheerleader here. She was, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I was fortunate enough to snag, you know, Patty. And it took uh, took three engagements, <laughs> but she finally... Uh, three engagements. <laughs> finally got her to uh, agree to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, we have four children. They are all in the Atlanta area. Okay and uh, four grandchildren. 
And uh, so the only attachment I have to Lagoti from family-wise is is uh, on Patty's side. Now there's, of course, Lannons all around Lagoti, mm-hmm. but not in Lagoti per se. Yeah. Grandkids, how many do you have? Four. Four grandkids. Four grandkids. And they're all in that area, right? Right. Okay. Very good. Uh, so the Dairy Master. So you would have been how old whenever you moved to Lagoti? <laughs> Dad retired from the Air Force in 1969, and we came back here, and uh, Dad purchased the Dairy Master, and that became my way of earning a, an allowance. I yeah. never got the allowance, Dad. <laughs> but uh, Never too late. Uh, I did put many hours in this place. Yeah. So you moved here in 1969, and you said when your dad retired from the Air Force, where were you located right before you moved here? Japan. That's what I thought. Yeah. Right. So culture shock. Um, well, small before, town, Indiana. Well, I had spent my third grade year here. Oh, did you really? Okay, yes. I did not know that. At St. John's. Okay. Uh, elementary school. So. I got to know Mark and Mark Stevens and and uh, you. Yeah, so that's how. So when you moved back, you already had people that you knew. Exactly. I don't. I don't think I was aware that you were here in the third grade. Wow. Yeah, Mark. Mark. Uh, Mark and I. We uh, we wrote letters back and forth. From, I didn't know Mark could write. Yeah. Uh, well, I wish I had those letters to, to prove it. Proof. Yeah. yeah. All right. No, but that, of that's course, great. You know, Mark and I have another chapter. Of you do Our history together <laughs> down at Evansville. Evansville. Evansville Latin School. Yeah, we talked about that one. Did you see the interview with Mark? Yes. You, I was gonna say you've oh. got to watch it. You're mentioned prominently in it, and uh, Mark's got <laughs> no, some stories. Notoriously. <laughs> yeah, you are. You are. But uh, but uh, I, I, in that interview, I've told you that Bernie's the one who got me doing this. Mark started this getting to know your neighbor. And Bernie said, hey, Greg, you need to do one from Lagodi. If I remember right, you said there are a lot of characters in Lagodi to talk to a lot of stories. And I said, well, I don't even know how to start. And uh, But I did. And here we are today actually talking to you. And it took off and you've done yeah. extremely well. I've, I've learned a lot uh, from your interviews. And So Dairy Masters, so 1969, you, you come here. Um, Trying to figure out how old you were at that time. So you would have been the eighth grade. I actually went to eighth grade here too. Okay. Okay. So the eighth grade, do you remember what were your memories of the move? I mean, we're going, we're going back to Lagodi, Dad. Is that what you wanted to do? Oh, yeah. I want to go back to see all my friends. Okay. Bateman family. Yeah. Well, you had friends in Japan, did you not? I did. Yeah. But you, you came back to Lagodi, your, your dad's homeland, right? Correct. Okay. And so tell me how this all started. And, and I'll talk to your dad, we hope, uh, in a little while. But at least your recollection as to why you actually were moving back to Lagodi. Well, dad retired from the Air Force and uh, moving back here. And I was in the eighth grade and I would start high school. And so... Of course, you know, me and my mom were the only one uh, with dad. And uh, but she was also living here when I was in the third grade. And uh, so mom pretty much ran the place. You know, dad bought it and put the roof on and put the uh, picnic tables out here when there were trees. The roof picnic, being the red and white. The red roof. and white. Roof. What, what was the logic behind that? Uh to be seen to be seen high, yeah. highway right. <laughs> yeah and and it's and it's attracted a lot of people over the years that's that's for sure you can't miss it no so your mom cecilia i know she's got a japanese name that i wouldn't be able to pronounce but uh, i mean i just remember her bernie as being the loveliest of ladies um maybe she I, I know she was a great mom but i'm sure you saw some discipline but all we saw was was niceness and but it had to have been hard for her to come from her homeland, basically, over here into a small town and submerge in, into this. Do you, do you remember anything, any memories from her talking about, or, or was it difficult for her to get involved in the community? 
Well, as you mentioned, uh, she endeared herself to many people in town. Mm -hmm. And that's when uh, Sam and Dola Lannon were still alive at the time. Uh, you know, dad's parents. And then we had uh, Teak and Millie Jones. Millie was dad's sister. Okay. And then we had uh, Rita May and Gordon Strange. Rita May was dad's sister. And then we also had, uh, let's see, where was Norma Kay? Norma Kay was the youngest, and she's the only one besides dad who's still living. So, uh, and she was living in Lagodi for a while in the Tom Bell house mm -hmm. there on the highway. And now she's back in Georgia where her kids are centralized. Um, so I had my, my cousins, Nancy Strange and John Strange and, and Sam Strange, who I think is living in Lagoda. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Steve Strange is up north in, in Indiana. June and Janie Jones. Yep. Uh, Janie lives in Cincinnati now and has a vacation home in Cape Coral, Florida, which got hit by the hurricane. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, June lives west of town. She lives out in the uh, Bellbrook area, I believe. And she I was a neighbor that. for a little bit of mine. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what? The Dairy Master, you, you buy it, you're put to work probably, how many hours a week would you say? In, in, you know, you had your school, you had your activities, but it seemed like you were here a lot. I was here a lot. <laughs> uh, but I did have fun at the same time. But I tell you, the uh, the fun times here were the basketball weekends. Oh, my gosh. And you were right in the middle of it. Exactly. And uh, the parking lot was full, overflowed. But think of the time, 1969 to 1975, right? You know, we talk about the glory days of basketball. Mm -hmm. Those six years really encapsulate that, right? And, and, and this was core. and this was the hangout. This was it. People there used to be a jukebox right there. I don't know if that was before or after you, uh, but uh, but this was it. Everybody came. Uh, and we'll give, you know, honorable mention to Dog and Suds was here. That was a hangout as well. As, as yeah. well. And, um, uh, yeah, Ligoti was uh, an active yeah. active town during basketball season. It still is. Yeah, it, it is. But So where we are right now is, is the dining room. <clears throat> I don't think the dining room was here, was no, it? No, George Templin. Yeah. The dining so basically room. you just had the front counter and maybe a... Uh, there was a booth on yeah. that side of the door and a booth on this side. And that was it. That was it. Otherwise, people and, would... And, and stools. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But, of course, there were car, car hops. And, and people, like you said, you had a picnic table. So people were just everywhere, right? I mean, it just seemed like cars would come in. And, but speaking of car hops, because that's the most important part, it seems like, of the Dairy Master, because everybody seemed to be a car hop. So in the time that you worked here, our memories aren't as good as they used to, Bernie, I know. And, and I, don't, I don't care if you miss people, because you will. But give me 10. 10 car hops? 10 car hops. Oh, my goodness. Now, we got uh, limited time, but I'm, I'm guessing you can do that. Uh, well, when we first bought the place, um, Martin, Marty Joe Jones yeah. was here. and uh, Already here. Already okay. here working and uh and there was another older girl and i can't remember her name but i have her picture mm -hmm. um but uh when we took over mom uh not having a daughter uh all of a sudden she had 10 daughters yeah. and so there was uh cindy butcher uh jonelle downey uh I think all three Trambaugh's. One time or another. One time mm -hmm. or another. Uh, Sylvia first. Mm -hmm. And then, um, oh my gosh. There was Carla, then there was Brenda Trambaugh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how many is that? Oh. <laughs> That's 10. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, Vicki Gillick. Uh, Marla Cobb, mm -hmm. who, you know, her, she's famous for yeah, writing. Yeah, she books. writes, right? 
and uh, let's see. Uh, I even think Kim Nolan worked here for for a while, and then, uh, gosh, Mary Beth Kelly, who I think she lives in Washington now. You know, very short Mary Beth. Oh, I remember the Kellys here. very well, yeah. Um, but gosh, I had uh, you know, as you say, you know, mm -hmm. ten or fifteen sisters. Yeah. And uh, I got I had the lucky job of of you know. When we closed up at night at 11, mm -hmm. uh, take some of them home. There you go. There you go. That's the fun of it, right? So yeah. I remember, too, back then they had the trays, right? Mm -hmm. The car hops would, I think there would be a tray out there you'd Hung put on your, your window. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the car hops would uh, bring their food out to there if, you, if they'd like. Uh, but everybody in town wanted to be a Dairy Master car hop. I mean, every, every girl in town, every high school girl. Most were. At one time or another. At, right? at one time or another, yeah. Yeah. There, there's a picture behind you that I've already put up on Facebook that was after you, but those are some of the dearest friends that I have. And so in my high school days, every girl wanted to be a car hop here at the Dairy Master. And like I said, most were. What was your specialty back then? You know, uh, George Templin had the had Mr. The Mr. T. T. Did you have anything that uh, everybody had to have? Well, the milkshakes, I remember that. The milkshakes are really good. I'll, I'll tell you what I made the most of since I was up front. Uh, I didn't do a lot of cooking. cooking. And Elaine Bruner mm -hmm. did oh. most of the cooking yeah. back in the back. <laughs> I remember her back there. And uh, even Judy Butcher. I remember Judy there. back there. Mm -hmm. What well, was some of the best memories when you, when you think of the Dairy Master? And, uh, I know we talk about basketball and things like that, but what else pops into your mind when that might instantly come to your mind when you think back then to those days? <laughs> we were open on Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. Why? And, and the story about that is when I was a baby, mom and dad were traveling and they couldn't find anything open on Christmas mm -hmm. and New Year's. So mom was open for the travelers. Mm -hmm. I bet you got a few too. Oh, we did. We did. I mean, I mean, think back then, nothing opened on Christmas, right? No. You were lucky to find a, a gas station open on Christmas Day. Correct. So, yeah, you're going through a small town, and you see an open sign. You're stopping, right? And we had people... Did that bother you? No, no. no. I, uh, I spent many hours here on Christmas and New Year's. Not many, but... Mm -hmm. You know, had to go out and socialize in this big town. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> but mom did, you know, and sometimes she ran the place by herself on yeah. those days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you didn't have the car hops probably working on Christmas oh, no. Day. Just, oh, no. Just, just your family. Okay. Anything else, Bernie, you can think of before we uh, try to get a hold of your dad and, and see what, what his thoughts and memories are? His dad's 91 years old, and... Um, it seems to be doing well it's from the cognitive standpoint, for sure. Anything else you can think of, though, that, <clears throat> uh, in regards to your time here at the Dairy Master? Well, again, uh, the basketball game evenings, yeah. I was torn from being out with the crowd, but Mom and Dad needed me here. And uh, the most you mentioned the most popular item on the menu at the time. Uh, it wasn't... Uh, it wasn't the food, it was the drinks. Um, maybe it's because I was always at, on the front, but mm -hmm. if I had a nickel for every cherry Coke I made, cherry Coke, yeah, or yeah. vanilla Coke, yeah. I'd be a millionaire. Yeah. Um, but the basketball nights were, were key, and uh, staying open, even on Thanksgiving, you know, mm -hmm. Christmas and New Year's, yeah. Mom made that commitment. But I think what's most important is, uh, to me, is, is the connections with Lagodi. And uh, I had spent almost 15, 14 years of my life outside of Lagodi. And then to come back and, and to feel and to be a part of Lagodi, mm -hmm. the Dairy Master was a big part of that. Yeah. So you didn't get to go to a lot of games? You, you, were, you were here working? or? Oh, no, I went to the games, yeah. but... Afterwards, it, didn't, you, it yeah. didn't get busy till after that's the game. True, see? That's true. That's so true. I drive up and park, you know, way over here on the yeah. side, and come mm -hmm. in and help yeah. mom and dad out. All right. 
Well, Bernie, thank you very much, and welcome back. Well, does it still you. feel like home? It does. It does. And uh, when you said you wanted to do this inside the mm -hmm. Dairy Master, I, I said, that's appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Tell Patty hi. I will. And we'll talk to your dad, Norbert Lannon, hopefully, in just a couple of minutes. With us is Norby Lannon, Norbert Lannon, Mr. Lannon, I should call him. 91 years of age, is that right? That is correct. And you are where, sir, right now these days? Sitting there, Dan. Where are you at these days? Where are you living? I am living in Fairborn, Ohio, next to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And you were here in 1969. You bought the Dairy Master, correct? That is correct. And who did you buy the Dairy Master from, do you recall? Well, actually, Charlie Fry and Alma, his wife, owned the Dairy Master, but I dealt with his daughter, Betty Harvison, at the time. And may I ask you why you bought the Dairy Master? What, what in your mind thought that uh, this would be something that you would enjoy doing? Well, my very dear friend, Art Graver that owned the uh, Star Tavern there. I pretty much just took him to task on what I should do. And he said, stay away from the taverns and go <laughs> for the Dairy Master. That, that's how it all came about, I guess. So, so when you, what were you doing before you came to Lagodi? I just retired from the Air Force after 21 years. And, and you, you're from Lagodi, right? Yes. At what area of Lagodi did you grow up in? Well, born and raised two miles south to Orella, between Lagodi and Winkfield, if you know where that is. Yes, I do. So when you came to Lagodi, you were looking for something to do. You were looking for employment. That is correct. Were you looking in particular for a business to buy, or were you just looking for opportunities? Well, more or less a business to buy, yes. And whenever uh, your then-wife, Cecilia, so it was a business decision, a family decision, I'm sure. Did everybody buy in, including your young son here, Bernie? Well, he was part of it, yes. <laughs> I know Three he was. Ones, I guess, yes. Yeah. So what, uh, what were the challenges, Mr. Lannon, of, of owning a small business like this in a small town? Well, we just more or less continued with how Charlie Fry, he was spending some time in Florida. And I, of course, I dealt with his daughter there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the purchase, we began more or less just carrying on the tradition, I suppose. Do you remember at any point you wondering, what did I get myself into? Well, I suppose going into any business, this is true, yes. Yeah. What are your memories of the Dairy Master, sir? The, the, the good memories that you have of the Dairy Master? Oh, I don't know. Over the years there from 69 until 75, we went through many car hops. Some was quite memorable, yes. So you mean uh, just trying to staff the place, or just you had a lot of car hops that uh, uh, those were good memories? Well, immediately after purchase 69, I attempted just to have a walk-in, but that didn't seem to work. The people were more or less used to car hops, so I went back to the car hops. <laughs> So, stayed for years. Yeah, so you didn't have a real dining room back then. It was pretty well everybody was uh, coming up by car and be serviced by the car hops, correct? That is correct. And so when it, during your time here, you put on a roof that is red and white in color, correct? That is correct. That roof is still on today. Did you know that? I think it is, yes. Yeah, why did you do that? Well, to attract 
from, from the highway out there, which I think I think that pretty much done the job. I think it worked so well that they they kept it. I believe yes. Yes. What, what, what other changes, if any, do you remember making to the building? Well, I remember recall the first Sunday we was in operation. The older, sweet, nice train machine couldn't keep up with the <laughs> business. So I, the next day I called Indianapolis and they brought, brought down a new tailor machine and we live happily ever after. Yeah, that's... Uh quite the machine that you had. I, I remember that. And Bernie was telling me and reminded me about the drinks that you had that were so famous, the, the cherry Cokes and the vanilla Cokes and such as, such as that. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. So good memories here at the Dairy Master, right? Oh, yes. What, what, when was the last time you were in this building? Oh, when was the last time I visited? That you were in the Dairy Master. Oh, that was 75. I don't know exactly. You haven't been back since then? Oh, I've visited three or four times after that, yeah. Yeah. Well, now, and I know Bernie showed you around a little bit ago, but there's a very nice dining room, and uh, they've added on, and uh, it's it's quite the place. You'd be proud of it. Yes, the Templetons did. I think they had it 30, 35 years, something like that. Yeah, the Templins did, and then they sold to Pete Smith, and Pete has had it since 2008. So, uh, yes. yeah, that's a long time. Yes, yes, it is. Well, you look like you're doing well at 91 years of age. Are you getting around on your own? You look like you are. Pretty much. I just lost my best friend there in Lagoody. Bob Fraser, yes. Well, did you wipes them out? I guess. Did you know, Mr. Lannon, that Mr. Prather was, as far as we knew, the last surviving World War II veteran? I did. I did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, we will let you go unless there's anything else that you can think of that you wanted to talk about during your time here in Lagodian with the Dairy Master. Well, George's. Widows. I spoke with her, I think about a year or so ago down there in Lagodi. I guess she's still around, but uh, she is. Per perhaps uh, she could enlighten me on some of the happenings during their regime. I don't know, but uh, I, I hope I so. I hope so. Now, one other question I didn't want to ask. So, you sold the building. You sold the Dairy Master in what year? Seventy-five. And can I ask, at that point, the decision making why why you ended up selling the Dairy Master? Well, we moved to Phoenix area. So you're moving to Phoenix, yeah. and if I remember right, you had another restaurant in Phoenix, did you not? Yes. Very successful. Uh, a few movie stars came in there from time to time, didn't they? Well, uh, yes. Politicians. <laughs> congressman and so forth. Yes, it was quite successful. What type of restaurant was it? It was a Japanese... Uh, Japanese restaurant. Oh, called Sukiyaki. Sukiyaki. Did you do much of the cooking? No. No? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Landon, thank you so much. It's great to catch up with you, and uh, we appreciate you coming on with us. Okay, been nice talking to you. All right, you too. Take care. Hi to Mark. Hi to Mark. Yes, sir. Okay.